<clears throat> Welcome to a review of the first expansion for Disney Sorcerer's Arena, Epic Alliances, Turning the Tide. Big thanks to the op for sending us a review copy of this expansion. So before getting our feet wet with this expansion, it's important to note that you do need to own a copy of Disney Sorcerer's Arena, Epic Alliances in order to use the contents of this box. If you aren't aware of the base game, I encourage you to take a moment to check out our Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances core set review, either on the blog, on YouTube, or as part of episode 201 of our podcast. We'll be here when you get back. Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances Turning the Tide, another big long name for this expansion, was designed by Sean Fletcher, which is the same designer as the base game. It's published by The Op in late 2022. This small box expansion has an MSRP of $19.99 US. It adds three new characters to your Disney and Pixar skirmish game. Stitch from Lilo and Stitch, Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean, and Moana from, well, Moana. All three characters are tied together by each having the Oceanic keyword. To go with these characters, there are also some new rules, which include a new status effect and rules for arena tiles. For a look at what you get in this box, check out our Disney Sorcerer's Arena Turning the Tide unboxing video on YouTube. There you'll see the small single-fold rulebook, a plastic box insert that's fantastic for protecting the stuff but not so great for storage, three new character standees and bases, three large-sized cards for each character, 20-card deck of standard-sized cards for each character, and three cardboard punch boards with initiative tractors, new status effect tiles, and water hexes. The component quality here matches the base game for the most part, and we didn't see anything that would make these cards stand out as different from the ones in the base game. Probably the most important thing in a card game like this. The only issue I had is that my Davy Jones standee refuses to stay in its base. Oh, and I still hate the plastic film on the standees in all versions and all expansions of this game with quite the passion. That's a one-time problem. Though we have noted the newest expansion changed the plastic film. Sadly, too late for those buying this one. This expansion adds three new rules to your games of Sorcerer's Arena. Let's take a look at each of them. The first is the rules for constant abilities. These are featured on some character cards and are abilities that are always in effect when that character is in the arena. Note they do, of course, stop when the character is knocked out since they are not considered in the arena. Next are the rules for arena tiles. These hexagons are placed into the arena by various cards or abilities. They may, must be placed on an open, unoccupied space. Spaces with arena tiles and no characters are also considered unoccupied, and if you place an arena tile over another arena tile, it replaces the original with the new one. Note these tiles do not replace the effect of what they're placed on, which at this point really only matters for victory point spaces, a... Arena tile on a victory point space still counts as a victory point space. Now, this expansion comes with one new type of arena tile, the ocean tiles. When an oceanic character, that's someone with the oceanic keyword, moves onto or throw an ocean tile, they may add one space to their movement. If the character doing this is the active character, the tile is removed. Ocean tiles have no effect on non-oceanic characters. Finally, there is a new status effect added with this expansion, no punchbacks which is a constant effect that prevents damage done by a single rival to Stitch. Okay, now let's get to what people really care about, the new characters and what they offer. So first off, we have Moana, who is all about movement. Much of this is accomplished through placing ocean tiles on the board. She synchronizes well with other oceanic characters due to this, which actually includes other characters in this expansion, as well as Ariel from the base game. In addition to using ocean tiles and other powerful movement cards to get around the board, a number of Moana's other actions and attacks are based on how far she moves. The more momentum that she builds up, the bigger punch she packs. Next, we have Stitch. This little guy is quite the tank. If he ever takes at least three damage in one hit, he immediately gains two tough. He can also banish cards to remove status effects, and his new effect, No Punchbacks, can stop all damage from a single rival while it's in play. Another interesting aspect of Stitch is the fact that he's an experiment, and things can be a bit random with him. Stitch has a number of cards that do different things based on whether his life is at an even or odd amount. 
Finally, we have Davy Jones. Davy is all about pirate curses, not only inflicting curses on his rivals, but also his allies. The more curses that are out there, the more powerful Davy Jones becomes. This is strengthened by his constant ability that has him heal when his cursed allies deal damage to rivals. Now, the other big thing Davy can do is summon the Kraken, one of the biggest attacks in the game. This is an upgrade ability that does a ton of damage in an area, then flips Davy back over. So you can upgrade him again and call that Kraken a second, or if you're playing well, maybe even a third time. Some new rules, three char- three new characters, leading to plenty of new options. I think it's plen- pretty safe to say that if you enjoy Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances, you're going to want to pick up this expansion. Yeah, personally, I love the rules for arena tiles, as one of the complaints you see a lot about Sorcerer's Arena is how boring the battlefield is. It's the same every game. What I can't wait for is to see more tiles than just ocean tiles in future expansions, And what I would really love to see are some arena tiles that aren't tied to characters. Maybe some kind of rules for setting up scenery or terrain at the beginning of a game. Now, I must note here that we have a copy of the first printing of Turning the Tide. And since this was released, there have been changes. They've released a six-page errata and FAQ. And one major change is that all future releases will have two-sided, player-colored ocean tiles so that opponents can't play off of each other's ocean tiles. And wording on various cards has been changed to reflect this. Additionally, all three characters in this expansion have lowered their XP value by one point. Yeah, that's a significant change, and it confuses me somewhat, because I actually like the fact that having two Moanas in play just put water all over the board and made all the Oceanic characters go all over the place, but... I am not playing this game professionally or in tournament play, so I'm not as worried about game balance as other gamers might be. So I'm sure this change is done for a reason, though it kind of confuses me. I do wonder if the op will be offering replacement cards for people who have the first edition like us. Now, of the three new characters, I found Stitch to be the most fun. I really liked the cards that were based on life total, and it tended to be either uh, attack cards or defense. It kind of went one way or the other, which was kind of neat. And I also found that that punchback ability really annoyed my opponents in a fun, annoying way. Moana is my next choice, uh, especially when you combo her with Ariel. I really like the combination of that two characters. Because this leaves you with a healer that can really get to where they need to be, as well as a bit of of a heavy, heavy hitter in Moana, as long as you are able to leave those ocean tiles out and you don't need them to get around the board. Now, my least favorite character in this set so far is Davy Jones, and I think that's mainly because I haven't figured out how to play him well. His whole curse system seems very powerful, but you have to find a way to balance it out. You're, you're walking a line when you're playing him, because while they're out, Davy becomes really hard to kill. He becomes a super tank, but you have to do something to keep those other weaker characters from dying off over and over and just giving your opponent crowns. Well, I never got a chance to play Stitch. I am a big fan of Moana especially when it comes when in use with other oceanic characters. Now, Davy Jones is definitely going to be a tricky one to play, but it really depends on that team you're using and how well you can manage and make use of curses. Now, the only real complaint I have about this expansion, um, not counting the fact it's been errata and my cards are out of date, is that the included insert doesn't match the quality in the base game. The base game gives you spots for everything and a way to separate your characters out so you can quickly grab a character's deck. It's just there to hold everything during shipping and to make the box the you know a good size to be on display. It could be way smaller based on the physical components you get. There's no way to separate the three decks. And, I, and, and to be fair, the base box also isn't great for holding this expansion. While you can get it to fit, it'll all fit in the base box and there's not a problem with that. It's just not stored in that easy to access, quick, just grab a deck way. Sadly, it seems quite likely we'll see some sort of big box solution provided by the op to take advantage of the need for players to carry more than just the base set and maybe a single expansion around. And if you sleeve your cards, you probably can't even get that first expansion in. Yeah, see, that's not good. I don't know. I I, I'm with, I get it. big boxes and that for, for most deck building games, but there's so many additional components to this. With all your tracking tokens and everything else, it really isn't easy to, to make a deck. Like, I, I wouldn't even know what I'd bring if I was going to say a tournament with this. Overall, this is a great expansion for a great game that we've all been enjoying. 
I really appreciate that it wasn't just more of the same and it does add new things. You aren't just getting three new characters that you toss in with everyone else. You're also getting some new mechanics. I also really like that this carrot set included characters that had abilities that keyed off already existing keywords. Um, in particular, the fact Ariel's oceanic, so it works in well with the oceanic cards included in this set. I'm, I'm assuming it's just going to continue with the other expansion. What this shows me is that the designer is keeping in mind all characters and not just making a little small self-contained set of three characters that work good together. Now, of course, they are helped by the mobile playtesting to some degree, even if, as we've said, this game is quite different. Keywords are something that has been carried over from the digital. Fair. At this point, I've managed to mash these cards up with the original, and these new characters are just part of my collection of characters you can draft when you sit down to play a game of Sorcerer's Arena at my house. Everything is sorted into the base box in a serviceable way, and when introducing the game to new players, I probably wouldn't even call out there's an expansion unless someone went, oh, where do I get this game? I'd have to be like, oh, well, okay, these characters come from this, and these come from this. To me, it's just all one thing. Indeed, at least in gameplay, they do just fit in nicely. And the only reason you're not buying them as part of the main set is it would drive the cost up and make the game much more difficult to purchase. True. This way, you can start playing and add in fun sets of characters as finances or your preferences allow. Mm -hmm. well, that's it for our detailed look at the Turning the Tide expansion for Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances. For a bit more info on this expansion and some great pictures of these characters in play, check out my Turning the Tide review on the blog. If you enjoyed this review, please consider tipping the bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop, where you can not only support the show, but also get cool bonus stuff like behind the scenes blog posts, copies of our pre-production show notes, bonus audio, and more.